You know him, you love him, you want some more of him. The voiceover doctor, a real smooth talker. The voiceover doctor show. Okay, welcome to the voiceover doctor show. Hi, I'm Bill Holmes. I am the voiceover doctor. And with me today is our distinguished guest from 1955. Um, my, my, my close, can I say close personal you friend? You may say close personal. My close personal friend, Mr. Richard Horovitz. Richard uh, is, is a, you're an actor. Some say. And you're a writer. Some say. And you do lots of voiceovers. Some say. And you, you are also one of the uh, prestigious and, and uh, cutting edge voiceover teachers here in Los Angeles. I say that. <laughs> Some say the other stuff, but really? I say that. Yes. Really? You, don't you must have read my website. <laughs> well, well, yes, I, I, I read your bio, oh, actually. Yeah, bio, yeah. Yes. One that you wrote, by the way. Well, I think. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I have to set the record straight, don't I? <laughs> I think so. Yes. Or, or, it, you know, or, does, does or yours, make the record crooked. Either well, way. does yours match Wikipedia? That's what I want. Probably to not. Is it, is Wikipedia it like, is written by some thirteen-year-old fangirl. Is it? Somewhere. Is it like R Richardpedia? Yeah, Richardpedia. Yes, Richardpedia. Yeah, Horvitzpedia. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, now, uh, when I say writer, you actually wrote uh, a show. Yes. Called the the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Correct? Oh, I wrote an episode of that. My oh, you wrote an I wrote one episode, and then my wife and I wrote an episode. Okay, all right. Of the show. But that was something you starred in. Yes, I was the voice of Billy and Billy's father, Billy. Did you want me to do that kind well, of yeah. stuff? Well, yeah. Yeah, they do that. that. Because Billy's yeah. father, to me, sounded just like Billy. Let so me let try me, it again. Let me, let me, okay, okay, okay. All right, it's like, sure. Billy, you can't do those things. <laughs> Dad, how come I can't do those things? Okay, now, that, now there's a difference. There's a difference. Right. Okay. Really? I think I just pooped myself. I did a lot of, <laughs> lot of effort really? on my part. Really? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, do they ask you for pooping sounds in cartoons? All often? the time. All really? The time. And even if they don't ask me for you them, just, I give them to them anyway. Yeah. 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 Usually doesn't fit in anywhere. Yeah. Like in the Warner Brothers stuff, if I'm playing like a superhero, it's like, you have to listen to me, Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, oh awkward, oh, invisible that man. Was, that I, was, a, that was, was a wet one. I was sitting on the invisible man's lap when I did that, too. So it's not oh, so invisible. Oh, man. It's awful. Okay, well, listen, uh, before we get into entertaining America here. Yes. And when I say America, I yes. mean about 10 people. people. Right. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, his cell phone. The phone goes off on every this show. This is professional. I always forget to turn the shows off. This is professional. Would you like a little drink? Would you like a little sure, something I'd love a little to imbibe something. yourself with? Yes. Uh, oh, Margarita, could we? Could you bring in a little drink for Richard? Margarita? Yeah, this is Margarita. Whoa. Hi, Margarita. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I, I, oh look! Oh Ooh, yeah! Pee -pee. Pee -pee. Pee -pee. Daddy, I got a little on the cheek. <laughs> come, come on around, yes, Margarita. Wow. Oh, oh, thank you. My I think eyes I were too just... busy bulging as I was getting my kiss. Oh, and that's for you, Doc. Oh well, thank you, Margarita. Oh, 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 well, that is wild. Doctor? Yeah, yes, Margarita, I, I believe you've you've cured us. Oh, fantastic! That is wild. I didn't know that. She's got to do it. Oh, oh, oh. She only has one eye. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. minute. Oh, there you go. Wait oh. a minute. Oh, I didn't realize she was standing backwards. Right. I thought right. she only had one eye. That, that is wild. <laughs> I believe that was the best margarita response we've ever gotten. Yes. I mean, yeah. here, take, here, cheers. There we go. Cheers. Cheers to the interview. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, well, it's oh. been fun. Thanks for this time, yeah. Bill. No, Good luck, thank everybody. You. Thank you for... Well, you know, I have a couple more questions. Oh, just a couple more questions. That was an questions. awkward moment. I yeah, thought we were yeah. done. No, no, no. <laughs> you so just you paid me in margaritas <laughs> like, and I was off. Mm, dinner and a <laughs> show. Mm. <laughs> So, do you do an impersonation of Johnny Carson? No. As as my friend, and I believe you might have been on a show, Quentin Flynn. Yes, Quentin Flynn Quentin has Flynn. been has been on our on our stage. As here. my friend Quentin off, often says, is that I am Johnny Carson on helium. <laughs> so it's like my, most people go like, oh, that that is wild. Mine's like, oh, that that is wild. I, I did not know that. So interestingly enough, that voice ended up being um, on Ben Ten as Gray Man. Oh. When I did when I do the voice of Gray Matter on Ben Ten, it, it's it's basically just kind of a pitched up Johnny Carson. <laughs> Hold on a second, guys, it's me, Gray Matter. That, that is wild. That's that's <laughs> way it, That's how I do most of my voiceovers. I think I'm doing an amazing impression. Yeah. That really sounds nothing like it. Yeah. And then they go, oh, oh yeah, like that. that's yeah. unique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unique. It's Bob Hope. What? 
Ain't that wild? Hey. Uh, a perfect example of that is... Bubba, uh, bubba, bubba, uh, bubba. Is on... Uh, let me hear you. Wait, let me hear you do, Bing Crosby. That's actually my Dean, my Dean Martin. is like, hey there, Pally. <laughs> How's your Abdullah Blongada? Or the uh, the ant. Hey, on, Pally. Uh, the ant in the yard. Brother. Yes. Yeah. Do you know that um, that when I did the Angry Beavers, <laughs> Daggett, it started out as Lou Costello. You oh, listen really? to me, Norbert. But as I got into different impressions that sounded nothing like the people I was impersonating, it just became, it became Richard Orbit. Well, one of the things is I, I used to do a uh, I used to do a Jack Lemon imitation from okay. Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Okay, let me, let me hear a little of it. It started out as like, hello, uh, but perhaps you remember me from the Rio Rancho properties of '85. I graced two tickets to Paris. Well, then it became, I said ten, you said no, you said twenty, I said five. Give me those leads. I need those leads. <laughs> Put my name up on that board, right? So, throughout the course of that show, it made its way into the show. And so there's a whole episode where Daggett and Norbert do the ending of Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Oh. It's at the one where we're selling cho chocolate candy bars. That's like, funny. Now, Norbert, put my name up on that board. <laughs> Oscar, please. Well, it, it's funny because we had uh, uh, Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson. Yes. Good did, friends of did, mine. Did our, uh, you know, hey, you dropped the name. Here, let me get it for you. There I it is. I didn't mention okay. the name. <laughs> good friends of mine. Look at them. All right, they're not as good friends uh, as, say, Mark <laughs> Harmon or Fred Willard. We're going to get to that, okay? We'll get to that. Get to what? I was just mentioning no, my close friends. <laughs> Remind me to tell you my Marlon Brando story. Let's get back to the voiceover for a second. I, and I do want to hear that story. It's a good story. But, but... Uh, there I was. Rob, See, wait, oh, wait. Sorry, yes. I gotta, let me tell my story. Yes. My show. Yes. Uh, no, Rob and, and Maurice told that story when they were doing Tasmania. Uh, that they started just kind of dicking around the doing band. doing the road shows. Yeah. And that's kind of... It, it kind hey, of folks, and it. Julian, that's yeah. what you're fighting for. And, <laughs> folks, Martha Ray. That's what you're fighting Brooke for. Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. I, I was going to do a sketch where uh, it was like, uh, you come out and say, like, hey, everybody, I know I promised you, uh, I promised you, you know, uh, Loretta Swit, but I, she couldn't make it, folks, so I got the next best thing. Let's bring out Nancy Walker. <laughs> Ain't that something? That's what you're fighting for. <laughs> you, no, nobody, nobody knows, knows who Nancy, Nancy Walker, Walker is. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Martha. Hey, Martha Ray, folks. <laughs> In the wild. George, George Clooney knows who they George are. George Clooney, right. Nobody right. else. Yeah. George Clooney, my friend? <laughs> Very close. Why Very does close. my margarita keep sticking to the table is what I, I know. You know, you really don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. You don't want to know that. All right, let me get back to my notes here. Yes, yes. Um, let's, let's go back a little bit now. Yes. And again, wait. Hey, I'm, I'm, Charlotte Ray, <laughs> folks, that's what you're fighting for. Ain't that something? Oh, hello, Tootie. <laughs> was that Charlotte that Ray? That was Charlotte Ray, which was no, a lot that's, that's like, Catherine like, like a lot like Catherine Hepburn. You magnificent. You know, you. no spends. I, you know, he used to make on the Laurel Prince when he got older. It was not very pretty. That's why we had Laurel Prince, so that Spence I could make on the sheets and no one would know any better. <laughs> it's me, Norman, you old poop. <laughs> hello, Tootie. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to do anything. Yes. I like this yes. interview. Yes. This Go is ahead. a good interview. Yes. No, you're doing great. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you, because all the kids out there, they want to know, they wanna know how, how you got your start. And, and well, it started with my mother and father on one drunken night. That's how I originally started. That's a little further back. Further back than we need to go? Yeah, than I was saying. You, you were in Oliver. Oh. You were in a production of Oliver. I did a little research. It's very good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. It was circa 1979. Yeah. I was Dick Sean with Dick Sean, Stubby K, K yeah. Shaney Wallace. Now, now, where was that? Was that out here in L.A.? It was. So they actually do theater in L.A.? Well, it was my first equity performance. Okay. It was at, what you is now? five dollars a show? I, five, no, I got four hundred dollars a week. Wow. Wow, that's pretty good. In the Not 70s. Not bad. In the, the 70s. Good. And how old were you? I was 48. Now, in the <laughs> 70s, I was a, I was a fetus. I was but a fetus. Um, There's two spit takes I could have done, but I don't want to have to clean up the studio. It's me, no, man, you are poop. Um, so, well, you know, I got lost out in the woods. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter with you? You are poop. This is the strangest yes. interview I've done today. Oh, I'm Bob, loving it. Bob. Tell me about Oliver. Yes. What so, did you do? That, that was do you know the Aquarius started. Theater? It was the Aquarius Theater, and it's on okay. Sunset. It's now the Nickelodeon Theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over near Vine, yeah. right. And um, it was an equity 
theater called the Aquarius in the 60s and 70s. And we opened just after Zoot Suit closed. And it was um, produced and starring Shaney Wallace, who had played Nancy in the, in the 1968 Academy Award winning musical. Oh, Oliver. okay, of Oliver. Okay. Right, and right. it was directed by Anna White, who had also won an Oscar for choreographing the film. So this was about, you know, seven or eight years after that. Film. So, 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 uh, what about the kid who was in Puffin stuff? Was he? He wasn't on there. By that time, he was. You already, know his name? Yeah, his name was Jack Wilde. Okay, he passed away. I was a big fan of Jack's, actually. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. He was Jimmy on H.R. Puffin stuff, yeah. and he was the Artful Dodger. Yeah. And he sadly died of uh, throat cancer. Oh, I and didn't tongue know that. cancer. Yes. Oh. And it was a few years back, and it's very sad. It's me, Norm, at your hard pulp. <laughs> <laughs> See, we start going into yeah. the depressing stuff, right. and he goes right to Catherine Margarita! <laughs> Margarita! Margarita! Do you, do you need a refill yes, no, already? I, I need a refill, a but boom. not of a drink. Uh -huh. No! Wow. No! Yeah, wow. <laughs> Well, yes. I was just gonna say, was it fun working with Stubby K? It was a blast. Since we're dropping, it was names here. it was a blast working with Stubby K and Mark Harmon years later, and uh, Fred Willer currently. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm getting but but <laughs> Stubby K, but Dick Sean, he was probably one of the greatest guys I ever worked with. And what's funny was that Dick Sean was in another production in New York on Broadway when we were rehearsing Oliver, yeah. and then he flew from New York to to do this show. Was he Fagan? Or? He was Fagan. Okay. But <laughs> opening night, which was our big night, he forgot all the words to pick a pocket or two. And you know, all the all the pickpockets have little bit, bits they do. Yeah. Large amounts don't grow on trees. You gotta pick a pocket or two. You gotta pick a pocket or two. <laughs> so Catherine, so Catherine, Catherine was, in was in the show. Yes, Catherine. That's good. Yeah. And uh, he forgot all the words. Really? Yeah, and so... When you know it's like, why should we break our backs? Stupidly paying tax, better get some untaxed income. You got to pick a bucket or two. Well, each one of those we all have bits we do. Yeah. But he forgot all the words, so literally the entire song like this. Yeah da da, yeah la la, yeah da da, yeah da da, yeah da 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 da. You got to pick a bucket or two. So we just sat there while he did Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> so, so you didn't do any of your bits? No. It opening was just the one night, night opening my night. big shot. Opening night. Oh, opening and how night. old were you, really? I was thirteen. You were thirteen. Thirteen years old. Years old. Wow. I was one of the older ones of the. But you, you had done commercials and stuff. Oh yes, I had done a lot yeah. of like freshen up. Bubble your mom, your mom. There's did liquid you know? inside this gum. Well, they did like this. There's liquid inside <laughs> this gum. Are you, are you sure that wasn't the audition? Yes, that was the audition. Sure, that wasn't the audition. Sure. Her. You Margarita. Did, you didn't go to the L.A. Unified <laughs> School District. Be <laughs> careful. Mm. <laughs> I'm the janitor here. Try this. <laughs> okay. So. Um, all right, so you did commercials. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You did a lot of TV shows when you were a kid. I did a lot of head TV of the class, head of different the class, strokes. different strokes. Well, with Charlotte <laughs> Ray. Yeah, um, <laughs> you can't take it with you with Harry Morgan. Um, uh, I did uh, Rags to Riches with Joseph Bologna. Now, now were you regulars on these shows? I was or? recurring on some and guest stars on others. Okay, now head of the class. Yes. I, I used to watch. I Who? played Oswald Bletch. So I was like the, the smart kid, kid the nerdy the kid, kid from the other, the opposing school, who oh. falls in love with Christina Hodge's character, okay. uh, Simone. Oh, oh, the French girl. The no, French yeah, well, girl. she no, she wasn't kind of French, well, Simone. She, Simone, I, I, you know, as yes. a kid, that's how I. Yes, that's how like Simone. <laughs> that's like Juan. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like some Simone, please. Yes. Um, then you went to college, UCLA. I'm kind of moving forward. <laughs> wow, to you jumped twenty jumped right years. <laughs> well, well, I mean, do you have favorite uh, favorite story yeah, from favorite whatever? I mean, well, I had, I had, you know, I, I was thinking I was going to have to drag these stories. I out really here, but do I really have don't. a great story <laughs> about Marlon Brando. Okay, yeah, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear the Marlon Brando. So this is now in this story with my close friends. You should have heard it by now. Do you, uh, is no, it, I, I it, have heard it. Okay, all right, okay, they have. Okay, all right. Do you want me to tape up the story on, the, on here so you can read it off the wall? Kind no, of like Brando? I, no, but I'd like you to talk to me in my head, in my earpiece right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay what, I, what I refer to as what an earpiece, other, other people could refer, refer to as it is as an a, ear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, margarita! And, you know, he's, he doesn't even have alcohol in this. That's thing. right. I'm the only one drinking That's tonight. right. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, Marlon so here's Brando. My story. So, when I was in high school, uh, in my in my junior and senior year of high school, I got my first job, and it was what high school. 
Ulysses S. Grant High School Grant in Van Nuys, California. There you and my very first job was working at the Mann Studio Theater located at 12136 Ventura Boulevard, 1F Block West of Laurel Canyon in Studio City. Today we are proud to present Barbara Streisand Yentl. Yentl rated PG screens today at 1215, 315, 515, and special midnight showings on Saturday and Sundays. Prices are... That's my first place. I'm very impressed. I'm, well, I'm impressed. What is currently there is now the book star okay. on Laurel Canyon and Ventura. And there's a little booth, a little ticket booth out yeah. front. Oh, where yeah, yeah, yeah. That theater That's right where there. I used yeah. to sit and sell my okay. tickets. Well, once right. you've graduated from being a ticket seller in the booth, you got to work concessions. Okay. So one night, <laughs> I'm still laughing as I think about it <laughs> and sipping my fake margarita. Um, mm, seven the, up. the the Seven Up uh, Corporation mm, mm, uh, supplied yes. us with a drink. Yes, tonight. thank you, Seven Up, for Richard. Because obviously Coca-Cola Richard doesn't need to alcohol. You <laughs> realize Pepsi Cola shot him down. <coughs> Dr Pepper. Tell the Marlon Brando story. Now we all drink Seven Up. Okay. <laughs> Tell the Here's the Marlon Brando story. I so, got sixty minutes yes, of tape. All That's right. all I got. <laughs> so I'm working um, after the movie has started, and I believe it was uh, Never Say Never Again. The 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 uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. You know, James Bond, James Bond yeah. reunion thing. But I'll never say it again. I'll never say it again. Yeah. And I was working concessions all by myself, and all of a sudden, this big Mercedes 450 SEL pulls up in front of the, in front of the, uh, the theater. Yeah. Parks right in the loading zone, and out gets this guy, heavy with a T-shirt hanging on his belly, kind of greasy, hair coming down. And he walks in. I'm working the concession stands, and he looks up and he goes, "Give me a tub of corn." I say, "Yes, sir." So I get the corn and I say, would you like butter flavoring on that? And he says, yeah, slather some of that butter on there. <laughs> so I put some butter on there. And he goes to pay me. And I say, no, 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 no. It, it's on the house, please. Because you knew who he was. Oh, yeah, I you knew instantly. Knew oh, was. how could you not? I, and so I instantly. Not some homeless guy. No, no. Yeah. I said, no, that it's on us. Please accept it as our compliments. And he takes the, the $10 bill he's holding. And he looks at me and he says, the person who mows your lawn or cleans your house is as important as anybody else. Take the money. <laughs> and he threw the money at me. He got his corn. He got in his car and he drove away. Oh, he didn't even. No, say that's what movie. everyone says. <laughs> everyone has the same ranch. He didn't even watch the movie. He, he just no. wanted some popcorn. He just wanted some popcorn. <laughs> But here I'm doing a scene from, you know, the Wild Bunch yeah. with him. And it's like, here's Marlon Brando. Yes, let us throw a butter on yeah. You must be yeah. still I'm doing, I'm doing that in, uh, in Last Tango in Paris. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning out the Cleaning fingernails. Out, yes. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I, I, I don't know where to go now. Uh, UCLA. Let's, 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 go, let's go right to Mark Harmon. Let's get to Mark Harmon. I went been, to UCLA. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. One oh, second. Yes. You mentioned Mark Harmon a hundred times. Let's go to Mark Harmon. Here we go. Mark Harmon. Who's Mark Harmon? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, he's one of my favorite. That, kid, that scene he did in the West Wing, actually yes. one of the best scenes yes, in television. Yes, exactly. Uh, I like the scene he did in the East Wing. You, you, you went to... Uh, <laughs> I went to UCLA for one... On the one, cutting room floor. What? What is one? One... <laughs> You went to UCLA. I went to UC- you UCLA. meet Mark Harmon. No. Oh, no. You didn't? No. No. You didn't Mark that? Harmon is before my time. Okay, all right. Let's get that straight. Okay, all right. I was, uh, I was going to UCLA. I just started there. It was my first quarter there. Mm-hmm. I was majoring in theater arts. I was one of only 60 uh, students in the country that got in that year. I got in on a, on a scholarship. And um, I was at UCLA. And I was not having a good time. It was I didn't get housing, so I was living off campus, and I don't know. I was still auditioning for uh, TV and film roles and stuff, and I had been since I was ten. And so I got this audition one day for a TV series on this new thing called Cable, C A B L E, Cable. Cable. And it was for WTBS, Ted Turner Superstation, WTBS. Right. Yeah. And it was for a series called Safe at Home. Right. For a company called the Arthur Company, and the Arthur Company um, is famous now because they had gone on to uh, redo all the shows. Like they did the new, the Munsters today with Jason oh, yeah, Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I was which on also that. was on. I was also on that. Um, and they did the new Adam Twelve and the new Two Forty Robert and the new Dragnet and all that. But before that, they did original programming for Ted Turner, and there were three shows. The first was uh, Down to Earth, and that starred. Uh, Dick Sargent, uh, Carol Mansell. 
You know Carol. I do know Carol. Um, and the voiceover artist in yes, her own Yes, exactly. Uh, and it was uh, Ronnie Rick Shell was on the show. Ronnie Shell. Rip Taylor was on okay. the show. <laughs> Pulling them all out. And um, and so that was the first show. And it was successful, so they started another show called uh, Safe at Home. Okay. And I was on that. And, and amongst the many guest stars on that were David Carradine and uh, oh, tons. Barbie Benton. <laughs> Oh, no. Margarita! No. Oh, mm. Margarita, we'll meet you in the grotto. <laughs> mm. And so, we did 103 episodes of that in first run syndication. You're kidding me? 103 episodes wow. in three years. Mm. But in the, in, during one of the hiatuses, I went... Because normally that would be a five-year run. Well, easily, episodes, easily five, years, five yeah. years. Yeah, this was like no hiatuses. <clears throat> yeah. We, we just barreled Just through. kept going. Just kept going. And during one of the hiatuses that we did actually get... I auditioned for uh, Carl Reiner for this movie, Summer School, starring right. Mark Harmon and Kirstie Alley, and Patrick Labrato and Courtney Thornsmith, and um, Mark Harmon, like I said. Yeah. And uh, I played the character of Alan Eakin in that. We did that in 1987. Kind and of a nerdy guy? It was a stretch, kind yes. Of a... Yes. I did it like this. <laughs> Wait a minute, Miss Hushel, it's me, Alan Eakin. Oh. Everything I did was, you know, Catherine Kind of Catherine. like Catherine, Catherine Hepburn. Kind yeah. of like Catherine. Yeah. And Charlotte yeah. Hay. Yeah. No, we're, we're, um, we're, we're picking up on that. <laughs> so I did that film in 87. And uh, it, to this day, it's like a cult classic. Yeah. But now I get people saying, I grew up watching that. Really? Which I love. That's yeah. going to make you feel good. Well, I, that makes me feel good. I feel good in, in one way, but yeah. kind of you Well, go, I get wow. that same thing with my voiceover shows, yeah, too. Yeah. Like Amy Beavers and stuff. That, you know, those shows are, you know, 15, 20 years old almost yes. now, which is... Yeah. Woo! I was with the Three Stooges at the MGM Grand. I played Mo. No, did you? I did. Did you really? When the MGM reopened in 1990 something, there was a stage show of the Three Stooges, and I moved to Las Vegas and I played Mo. For how long? What do you think you're doing? I well, yeah, Pokemon. Let's go. Ah, you like that, don't you, Pokemon? You see that? Why I? Um, uh, I did that for a year. Wow. A year. I, did you enjoy living in Vegas? Because that's kind no. of a, a no. No, really? No. Are you a gambler? When I was did, younger, you gamble? when I was younger, I I used to gamble. One of the reasons I went to Las Vegas was because I had debt, but not from gambling. Oh, but just yeah. because work had been yeah. slow, so yeah. I, it was you know easy money. So I did the show for a year, and I saved up all that money and paid off everything and lived nicely after that. But yeah. the problem with Vegas for me was that it never <laughs> felt like people really. No offense. Felt like the people I knew actually got stranded there at some point. <laughs> there was a saying that if you lived there for ten years, you were a, you were a native. Yeah. You know. Well, or you were the cast member of Gilligan's Island. Right. Holland, yeah. Exactly. Kind of, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And so, <laughs> or Tina Louise. Well, the thing is, my voiceover career had started to take <clears throat> off, and so uh -huh. I literally did four, five shows a day, six days a week. Wow. And at the end of the sixth day, um, I would get on an airplane back to L.A. And on my day off, which was that Friday, I guess, or Thursday, Thursday was my day off, I would do all my voiceovers, all my auditions, all my jobs, yeah. and then I would sleep over, and at fr Friday morning at 6 a.m., I'd be on an airplane back to Las Vegas. And you'd do a show then. And I'd do a show, that, which my first show was like at, you know, noon, yeah. 1 o'clock in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah. I don't remember what time it was. Because in Vegas, you do a couple you, oh, shows. You know, all day long. There is no night or day. Yeah. Yeah. There is no night and day. Yeah. yeah. And that's how, uh, and, and then uh, I became a voiceover artist at the end. Okay, well, look, <laughs> before we get into the yes. whole voiceover end of this, let's take a little commercial break, okay? And we'll be... Uh, we'll oh, be, margarita! Uh, oh, you, we'll get a fresher on your margarita, so uh, we'll be right back after this. This is, I'm learning so much about <laughs> I you. am so I wonderful. Coming this summer, the voiceover doctor consults with the specialists. Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, Jeff Jones, E.K. Amati. Voice 2012, June 16th at the Disneyland Resort Hotel. For more information, go to voiceoverdoctor.com. Okay, we're back with uh, Richard Horvitz, uh, yeah. star. Yeah, look on the chart. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I, was, I was looking at my next question. All right, no, okay. no at my last show, I kept getting my own ag agent's name wrong. Uh -oh. So, um, no, we're back. Richard Horvitz. This guy has done more, more stuff than anybody I know. 
uh, including Rob. Now you went to high school with Robbie Riss. No, I no, I didn't but, go. I've oh. known Robbie for a long time. I went. I went to high school with Rad Daly, Moosey Dreyer. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know Moosey or or Bob Bergen. You weren't in that. No. Group? Oh, no, okay, no, okay. Because no. I know Bob and they're uh, they're all much older than me. Much older. Okay, you keep you keep saying that. <laughs> All right, so we started talking about uh, crossing over into voiceover. I crossed what, over to the what, other side. What what got you into voiceover, and did you need a medium okay. to get you there? All right, I did. I need a medium to bring me back. Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> we could use copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. well, um, Spencer, uh, yeah, love, love, love. You know, right. when I do conventions and stuff, you know, animation conventions and such, um, <laughs> I'm always asked that question: How? Like, who are your role models and why voiceover? Yeah. And I'm always brutally honest. I didn't wake up at five years old and say, I'm going to be a voiceover artist when right. I grew up. It wasn't like I was watching Mel Blanc, who I'm a big fan of, and June Foray, and like, that's what I want to do. Right. I, that, love, I mean, that was Bob's story. Bob always said, I they wanted, wanted to be a pig. Pig. Yeah, exactly. wanted to, right. Yeah. There's a lot of people like Bob and other, <clears throat> other yeah. friends that I work with that they wanted to do voiceover. But quite honestly, I knew nothing about voiceover. It didn't yeah. even, you know, in my, in my world as a kid, you know, the uh, the uh, the fairy tales. What would you call it? The, the fractured fairy, fractured tale. fairy yeah. tales were real. You yeah, know, it wasn't yeah, like someone exactly. was doing the voices. Exactly. Um, and I often think that when I meet kids today that and they ask me to do the voices, their parents is like, "Can you do the voice for them?" It freaks them out. Yeah. Because when you're a kid, that world is real. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I didn't start out wanting to do voiceover. I would start out as an on-camera actor and stage right. actor at ten. And and then we've already covered that. Yeah. Okay. So don't, then for after God's sake, like, don't go back there. You know, it was Catherine Hepp. <laughs> oh, oh it's God. Um, so it's the only impression he does. That is why. And that wow, and Jillian folks, that's different. Um, when uh, there was a Writers Guild strike in 1988. Yes, there was. And it was crippling. Yes, it was. And I, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do because when when we bounced back from the strike, things had changed. You know, right. uh, the the work was not as uh, bountiful as it had as it had yeah. been. And someone had said to me, you know, you've got a really interesting voice. You should do voiceover. I'm like, voiceover? What? I don't even know anything about voice. Well, yeah. commercials, animation, et cetera. Um, and at the time, I was with Susan Nathy CPC and Associates for on-camera commercials. Okay. And they shared an office with Sandy Schnarr Talent. Right. And so my friend Wendy, who was my agent and friend over at Susan Nathy, said, you should talk to Sandy about representation for voiceover. I said, okay. And so I went over to Sandy's, and I said, I'm interested. She said, well, you got to get a demo. And I said, okay, I'll get a demo. I didn't know anything about a demo. But yeah. I, you know, I basically picked Nick Omana over at Nova Productions, which is now Nova. Uh, uh, yeah, right? Nick Omana is still around. Yeah, too. Nick is still around. Yeah. And Nick, at the time, was working over <clears throat> Voice Tracks West, which is at the time was um, on Coenga Boulevard West. Right. Upstairs in this old building. Yeah. So I went in, I met with Nick. I said, I'll do a demo for you. And I did it. And it was on a reel to reel. Yeah, and, back in the day. Uh, back in the day. I think the voice uh, your voice reel is probably yeah, still up on, on the, the voice wall, on the wall, the wall right? There, yeah. And so I went over to uh, Sandy yeah. with my thing. I said, "There you go." And she goes, "Okay, well, we don't have any. Well, I want to put you in the booth and try it." I'm like, "Okay." Now, what was great about this was that it was blissful because I was ignorant to how it was in voiceover. Sure. Uh, I was only you know trained in on camera stuff, and so she said. Um, Okay, we don't have any young voices, so we'd like to we'd like to represent you, but we'd like you to take some classes and stuff. I'm like, take some classes. Classes. Come on, I've been classes. doing this since. Classes. The, look at me, classes. 1957. I can do it. Hi, Rob. Oh, 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 right. I'm currently <laughs> celebrating 50 years in show business. <laughs> Sam Schneider, oh, thank you very much. I, William Morris. I used to carry William Morris on my lap. That's how old what that means. But anyway. Um, <laughs> So I went and did this demo, and she said, take classes. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll take some classes. And then within my first month, I booked three commercial jobs. Wow. My first, very first one was for a car commercial, and all I said was, bye, Dad. I was yeah. like, bye, Dad. And you were about how old at this time? I was probably, um, I'll tell you, um, I was about 23, 24. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this a long time So play, playing a... Playing teenagers, teenagers yeah. Because yeah, yeah, like when I was 21, 22, yeah. I was yeah, playing 14, 15 14, year olds, right. Yeah. Same with me. I still play kid voices, you yeah. know, but it's always like a, you know, it's a, a character, character kid. A character yeah. kid, right. And so I thought, oh, this is great. Now at the time, the fee to do a commercial spot for the radio was $175 plus 10% for 13 weeks 
per spot per cycle. Right. That's what you used to have to write on your right. report yeah. cards, right? Yeah. 175 bucks. <clears throat> and I remember doing this thinking to myself, well, this is great. If I did five or six of these a day, five <laughs> days a week, I'd be making my net yeah. and then some. I don't have to do anything else. I really had no yeah. concept that it was as competitive as on camera. That's how naive I was. Mm -hmm. And so... Because, um, I mean, who would be doing it other than you? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, who exactly. does this, right? Just conquer the world. Exactly. Yeah. Now, at the time, I was told... I, I, I purposely zeroed in on animation because, one, it was series work. Yeah. Two, you got diff a different script every week. Yeah. And three, I worked with some of the greatest names and the greatest talent in, in the world. Which I'm sure you'll I'll mention, mention today. Yeah. <coughs> Robbie Benson. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Paulson. <laughs> Charlie Gray. <laughs> Charlie Adler. Robbie Seven. Benson, uh, Robbie you, Benson. Were, you were working with or he was directing? He was actually movie. recording with me at the time. Okay, he right. wasn't directing yeah. at the time. No, Stu uh, Rosen was directing. Stu Rosen, so, yeah. Okay. So, um... I remember I, I got my very first animation gig, and it was on a show called Prince Valiant, and that was the one that I worked with Rob Paulson and Robbie Benson and Stu Rosen directed it, voice directed it. And I, you know, it was my very first thing, and I did, uh, I was a ship's mate. And I, you know, I had a silly line like, yes, sir, we'll swab the decks immediately, something silly like that, because we were all in a pirate ship. So my part came up, and the whole room was there, and I say my line, and the whole room busts out laughing. I think, wow, I'm good at this, right? <laughs> what did you and do? I found my, <laughs> and Stu Rosen comes on the talk and he goes, I didn't realize we hired Woody Allen to play a pirate. Ah! Uh, right? <laughs> well, he should have been listening to the audition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was devastated, but I knew that's what I wanted to do, so I targeted yeah. animation. Yeah. And, you know, it took me from that point to when I finally got my first show, which was the Amy Beavers, about three to five years, I would say, to really get in solid with voiceover. Really? For animation, yeah. Okay. For animation. Tons of commercials up until... But again, do, do you feel that once you're in that animation club... No, no that's what I was going to say. Know. At the time, uh, you know, everyone was saying, and everyone's heard this, that there's only 12 people doing all of voiceover. There's only, okay, 6 to 12. It's yeah. different numbers, but it's never more than 12 people doing it all. Yeah. And I chose not to believe that. I, yeah. I didn't believe it. I thought, you know what, if I keep working at this, this is what I want to do. This is what I put my focus on animation in particular. I, I'm, I'm just, I, I've always, I've always found it challenging when people tell me I can't do something. Yeah. And I, I've got an I'll show you attitude. Um, I, I based my entire career yes, off of that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But that kind of fortitude <clears throat> mixed with the fact that cable was exploding and there was, there was just so many. So many channels to so fill many, and so many new shows. So much developed. programming to fill that I, um, that that's how I, I just, it, you know, it was a timing thing. It all worked out well. Nice. Very Nice. Well, now, let's let's talk about a couple of things you do. I mean, you did tons. You do tons of video games. I went on yeah. IMDb, and there are a million video games. Yeah. So, and I'm not a video game player, oddly enough. I'm not. Oh, margarita! Uh, I, I, no, 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 no. We don't want to fiddle there. Oh, we don't. Uh, but but there, what are? Give me like three titles of the most famous video games that I've done. That, that you're on. The, kid, um, the kids no, like, okay. will recognize you. It's like, oh, I've been playing that game all my life. You know, Orthopox in uh, Destroy All Humans. One, okay. two, three, and um, uh, also Raz and Psychonauts. And um, Psychonauts. Psychonauts. And I'm is that just like some crazy Boy Scout? No, in fact, <laughs> some crazy Psycho sailor from well, the Navy. Funny Psychonauts. It's funny you say Look at that. Try to untie that. It's like astronauts <laughs> and A U T. Oh, like knots. knots. Oh, yeah. knots. Yeah, but okay. it's funny you say like Boy Scouts because you do earn badges. And really? It's, and yeah, and it's actually like, yeah, it's a cult. See? Most of my stuff, it's funny, are always like cult classics. Oh, okay. and everything's right. cult. Like Invader Zim, which was probably one of my most famous uh, jobs. Right. Um, I played that, that's a series, though. That's a that's series. A cartoon series. Right, but that's that. You know, that was we only did twenty-seven episodes. Really? And it's because every time it's when I mention you do to people who are taking yeah. a class with me or something, Zim. they always go, "Oh, the guy from Zim, the Zim. guy from Zim." Yeah, that that went on. For, we only did twenty-seven episodes. We only did you know, all, barely two seasons. On but that. now it's still it's still it's going somewhere. It repeats. Yeah, it repeats. We never did any new episodes, but in fact. We have a convention coming up. It's our second. It's called InvaderCon 2, DoomCon, and it's in Torrance, California this year. July, you know when? July 28th and 29th, 
2012, this summer. And, and I imagine you'll be there. I will be there. And not only will I be there, yeah. the entire cast will be there, along with the creator, Jonan Vasquez, who never attends wow. these things. So it's it's a pretty big deal. We did the first one to celebrate the 10th anniversary in Atlanta, Georgia last year. Okay. And it was supposed to be the, a one-time-only event, but it was so successful that they decided to do a second event here in California, oh, in Los nice. Angeles. Yeah. And then are you guys going to do uh, scenes from Oliver? <laughs> to the, yes, to the we're gonna do that. Song. Yeah, we're going to do that, and, <laughs> and I'm going to do it as Catherine. The, the cast of Invader Zim yes, does the pick a pocket yes. song, and in they this sing life, all the words. One thing counts in the bank: <laughs> large amounts. I'm afraid now, these don't grow on trees. Now, you you mentioned the uh, uh, Angry Beavers. Yes. Um, how, how did you wind up getting that? Is there a good story? Well, you remember it? this story. Everybody in this town read for Angry Beavers. I, I actually you was read up, for I, it. I had, yep, I had a callback. Well, here, let me tell my okay. story. Go ahead. Because they called me in after you guys had already done you and uh, uh, Nick. Well, it wasn't me and Nick originally. But but when I went in there, it was Nick Bakai and you. By the time I got in there, okay, they they had me auditioning, and I was actually reading for the Nick role, for the Nick Bakai yeah, role. Right. Because they weren't sure. But about it wasn't. Who, it wasn't Nick. No? No. Uh, can it we was, say who it was? No, I'd rather not. Okay, right. But I'll tell you when you came in, because I, I remember this whole thing. Right? Okay, okay. Get well, it. all I know is I, I come in, and I read it, and they call me back, and I'm thinking, hey, this is this is good. I'm, I get called back for a cartoon, because I'm not really a cartoon guy. And uh, then they go, you know what? Let us play you some of the guys that we have here, yeah. and then, you know, kind of... Do I'm what like, they do. Yeah, and I'm, I'm listening, and I'm thinking to myself... And I actually said this to the guy, go, well, what the hell's the matter with these guys? These guys sound pretty good. Yeah. And it was you and who, it this was other the guy. guy. That, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they're like, well, you know, this and that. Now, that's probably why I don't work as much as you, because I'm thinking, well, these guys are good. Why don't they just hire these guys? <laughs> well, the story was this. You know, everybody and his brother read for this in town. I hadn't read for it. So by the time I came around to read for it, they had already done the pilot episode with two mm -hmm. other guys. Kevin Meany played the character I eventually played. Dad oh, okay, in. all right. So Kevin Meany was the original one. Yeah, they did mention his name too. And yeah. uh, and so um, they we re we they recorded it and they'd already done the pilot, and they said, you know, we're not really happy with what the sound of the show is. We want to change a little bit, so we're going to redo audition. So everybody knows where they're going. And this time, I went in on this. Mm hmm. And it was really interesting because I made a conscious a, a conscious decision on my part to do it kind of like a Lou Costello because I was like the younger brother and yeah. you know Lou Costello always had that kid like yeah. thing about hey yeah but I'm hey yeah go. but we're not gonna leave this yeah. place Norbert yeah. right if you listen to that it's very Lou Costello well turns out that uh, Mitch Shower the creator of the Angry Beavers and a dear dear friend of mine he and I actually sold a pilot to Disney that we did a couple years back but that we created and animated and. It didn't get picked up, but but Mitch was a huge Abbott and Costello fan. Oh, huh. and um, we talked about it, and that that really was in my favor because he loved yeah. Abbott and Costello. But if you think about it, I always said that my Lou Costello was a lot like uh, Time Daily. <laughs> if you think about it, it sounds a lot like you listen to me. You listen yeah. to me, Christine. I am a New York cop. I've been a bad boy. It's like one and the same. Right? So yeah. I, if I ever need a hook, I always think Time Daily for my like stuff. But um, <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, we get this. I get the job. Yeah. Along with this other guy. Yeah. And uh, we end up going in and ADRing the pilot, okay. looping the pilot. Okay. It's already been animated. We're just matching the right. mouth flaps. Uh, that was for your benefit. I know he knows that. Yeah. And um, I hear nothing. I think, well, that's weird. Oh. Yeah, called the agent, you hear anything? No, no. About a year later, I get a call from Sandy Schnarr, and she says, uh, they're, hey, cutie, they're, uh, they're gonna re <laughs> they're gonna audition this, um, gonna, we're gonna audition this, uh, Angry Beavers thing, you got a call. Hey, cutie! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And of course, this is Sandy Schnarr. <laughs> I'm sure Sandy's happy about it. Here, cutie! <laughs> so, Sandy, 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 Schnarr. That's what I would yes. always do. So, Sandy, I said to Sandy, you know what? I did that job already. What do you mean I have to go audition for it again? She goes, well, you don't have to go on it if you don't want to. I'm like, okay, well, I'll go again. Who am I, right? I want to yeah. do animation. So, I went in, and I was told at the time that they were they were going to go with me, but they didn't think it was fair to replace the other voice without auditioning this voice again because it wasn't fair. Oh, to I see, yeah. So, they could... so I, I went through the audition process all over again. And... Uh, 
in that side. And it's it's really a, a classic kind yeah, of Yeah, in fact, I, I go to Australia because I, I really? signed a contract with uh, this company called Supernova <clears throat> yeah. where I go to, I'm doing like a tour of Australia over three years. So I, in this past year, I went to Brisbane and did their, their like Comic-Con in Brisbane. Right, right. In April, I go to uh, Melbourne, which is actually Melbourne, and Gold Coast. And they're huge Angry Beaver tough, fans down there. Tough gig. Yeah, and then in, and then in, Ju in 2013, I go to Sydney. And I can yeah. take the whole family that time. So. Wow, nice. That's yeah, cool. That's, nice. that's a nice gig. Well, listen, uh, let's let's take another little break here. What? We're going to take margarita! a... Margarita! No, no, no. we got to no? sell stuff. we uh, got to sell things. No margarita? So we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back after this break. The voiceover doctor presents margaritas, mojitos, and microphones. At Compost Productions, we bring in the professionals for you to work with and learn from. Get behind the microphone and be directed by the best so that your performance shines. Mingle with these professionals alike, Rob Paulson and Maurice Lamarche, and sometimes even the doctor himself. And let one of our talented mixologists serve you a margarita. Come join us at Compost Productions for margaritas, mojitos, and microphones. Viva el voiceover doctor. All right, we are back. Wasn't that an entertaining commercial? We're back with Richard uh, Horvitz. Horvitz. H O R V I T Z. H O R V as in victory, I T Z. Okay, so now you, uh, I have a couple questions. Do you do a lot of commercials too? You know, my entire first part of my career in voiceover was all commercials. And it's like I tell people who want to get into voiceover that you need to do a commercial demo before you do an animation demo because... Okay. Um, and we've heard that a lot on this show. So. Because it's easier for an agent to get you commercial auditions than it is to get you animation auditions, to get, you know, casting people to, to listen to new voices sometimes. How, how tough is it to get into animation these days? Um, it's only tough in the respect that there's not a lot of animated series going on like we were used to. Like, around 2007... The animation market just kind of, you know, dried up. I don't know if you've heard that, but most animation now is is video games, and there's mm -hmm. things that are picking up. There's still Disney still doing shows and stuff, but if you look at like Cartoon Network, they're doing a lot of live action stuff. Right. Because yeah. Disney had such success with live action stuff. Yeah. Nickelodeon has live action stuff, so it's not hard to get an animation. It's just that the opportunities um, are not as uh, as, as, as plentiful uh, yeah. and bountiful as they yeah. once were, okay. except in video games. <clears throat> That's good. So um, uh, let me ask you this. Your ratio of cartoons versus commercials as an actor out auditioning in the field. For me? For you? Uh, well, I probably, I probably audition a, uh, a com commercial copy, two or three pieces of commercial copy, at least, you know, two times a week. Mm -hmm. um, but predominantly the ratio would probably be like 80% animation to 20% commercial for me. Because your agent pushes you in that direction. Right, that's, and that's, they know that's what I want to do. And you have the reputation for it. Yeah, okay, and that's okay. what I like to do. I like to do commercials. Yeah. But, um, but you know, you're, it's you're On camera, you're the green grapes on the fruit of the loom. That is correct. Uh, commercials, I right? And green you're green still grapes. doing it. Still doing right? it. Right? Rissa, you said he wasn't doing it, but I, <gasps> I told you... I didn't I see you. it. Oh, Margarita! <laughs> <laughs> now, when did you start getting into teaching? You, 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 15, you teach. Yeah. In you and Bob Bergen are are, are the most uh, recommended by me. Oh well, thank you. Uh, animation thank teachers you. in the business uh, thank because you. I I've, I've watched you teach. I like your style of teaching. Thank you. And what again? Obviously, you're very successful. You know some very important people in the industry. I mean, you're pals with. I went to the TV Academy thing for Carl thank Reiner. You, thank yeah. You, thank and you. and, and uh, yeah, I got I'll get you after the show. Okay. And I'm not gonna uh, get that back. You'll anymore. never get it. Back. I will continue to and, do Catherine uh, Hepburn until I get my ten dollars back. When, when we when we went to the academy, this guy knew Carl Reiner and who was the agent Jack? Uh, 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 oh, you mean George Shapiro? George, George Shapiro. You Sam know this, this guy. He knows everybody. Okay. And, I, and I'm thinking, okay, I know Richard. He's not that likable of a guy. He's not that talented of a guy. So why does he know these people? So I know you're very successful. 
and I respect your success. That's about all. Thank you. But why, when did you start teaching, and why did you start teaching? Because obviously you're not doing it for the money, because you're doing fine. Well, financially. thank you. Uh, I, I did it because about 15 years ago, um, Don Pitts... Don Pitts Don was Pitts. Uh, a, a great agent. Uh, I don't know if he's still agent. Yeah, he does. I think keep, he does, he a does of his own stuff. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does yeah. like Don Pitts. He's, uh, yeah, yeah. He was my agent. He was your agent. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't my agent, but he was a friend oh, of mine. Oh, he was my agent. agent. He was got he? me on the Doctor Demento show. The, oh, Doctor. I was on the Doctor Demento heads, show. Fish yeah. heads, Rolly. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm using so anyway, a tape. He was he was teaching at Northern he taught a class, and he had asked a mutual friend of ours to teach an animation class, and. He, you know, didn't know what to do, and he said, did I want to come in? And so I ended up teaching this class at Northridge. Oh, okay. And, um, and at Northridge. That's and Cal State Cal Northridge, State Northridge, Northridge. For the people out of town. And before I knew it, they asked me if I, would want to, if I wanted to teach my own class for animation uh, on Tuesday nights or something uh, once a week for, you know, uh, an in, I don't remember it was an indefinite amount of time. It might have been a definite amount of time. I don't remember. Yeah. But what ended up happening was... Um, the governor came in and, and canceled all, all, oh. all funding to liberal arts programs and the extended learning stuff. So we found ourselves without classes. And so before I knew it, agents were sending me people and saying, can you work with them privately? I'm like, okay, before I knew it, they were coming to my studio at home. Yeah. And then other teachers started referring people to me. And why they referred them to me was agents, for example, had just signed somebody. And they liked their voice, they liked their sound, but they had a real hard time being loose and playing. And that is what my whole um, my whole method of, of teaching yeah. is about, is about right. playing. In fact, I call them playmates <clears throat> because it's all about playing pretend, which we tend to forget to do, forget how to do as we yeah. get older. And um, so I would help to loosen them up and, you know, get them out of their head and, you know, stop being so stiff with their reads and stuff. How, how many weeks is your class again? I teach um, six-week courses, six-week workshops, probably three times a year. Okay. I also do, um, across the country, I, I teach in New York and Chicago. Like weekend? Weekend and, workshops, yeah. yeah. Um, and those are a lot of fun. Those are two, um, you know, eight- to nine-hour days, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. And then I, you know, well, Friday. we've talked about we've possibly talked about teaming one up in New maybe, York or Chicago. Maybe going to see a play, basically. Yeah, going to see, see a play. play. We're going to go see a play. So, we we want to see Book of Mormon. Yeah. I do any, like we'll take any tickets that anyone can send yeah, us. So send them to anybody in New York. Voiceover voiceover doctor. Doctor. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Anybody in New York, if you want a workshop, give us a call because we want to come see the right. Program. And if you want any chance of meeting us, you'll send us tickets. <laughs> Well, meeting you. I don't think anybody wants to meet me. You will send us tickets. <laughs> now, let's... look at me. You'll send us tickets. All right, go ahead. I don't, I don't want to get beat up. Just beat him up. Okay. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, that was an awkward can, moment. Can you... It got really tough, like I was Tony Soprano. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. the matter with you? <laughs> yeah. What's the matter with you? You What's know what? Problem? You look tougher when you were being Brando eating popcorn. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I always think that he had something in the bottom, like something that stuck in his stomach. Now, go, go a little more into yeah. your philosophy of, of, of teaching. Yes. You, uh, because I, I actually sent my, I've been teaching for 15 years now, yep. but I actually sent my own son. My, my son wanted to get into cartoons, and I said, you know, go to Richard. Uh, I know Bob yeah. Bergen has about a two-year waiting list, I think. And Richard is and, and, completely yeah, available. And nobody's going to Richard's classes. <laughs> That's right, nobody. No, no but I, I've always recommended, I said, Thank either you. go to Richard or Bob. Bob yeah. wasn't available. You were available at the time. I and think that the, what I teach is something that was actually taught to me. Uh, what I, a lot of what I teach was taught to me by a woman by the name of Diana Castle, who I credit for the way I think to mm -hmm. this day and the way I work. Um, I went about... Oh, I would say about 20 or so years ago, even more. Um, it was just before my voiceover career really took off. I was going on on-camera um, auditions, which I call opportunities to play pretend. Um, <laughs> glad you like I call them a long drive a across long drive town. town. <laughs> um, and I was, like, not having a good time, and I was going up on lines, which I never had done. Yeah. So I went to this woman, and she pointed out very quickly, she, like, figured out my issue right off the bat, which was that I was very product-oriented. Mm-hmm. Everything was, okay, I've done this, now give me that. All I right. did it this way, why aren't you laughing? So very product-oriented was what I, what, what I was. But what happens is when you're very product-oriented and you're not getting the payback for what you're investing, you begin to really 
come down hard on yourself. Sure. And that's what most people do is they just beat themselves up. And most fact, actors. Yeah, most <laughs> actors. Most actors, in yeah. fact, all. And, and especially in voiceover, when you're standing in a mic and there's a glass booth and you just see people oh, behind yeah. a screen going... Okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, it, you just you begin to imagine what is going on. You believe yeah. that. So And usually they're talking about lunch. Right. That's that's <laughs> a famous story. Talking they're talking about, about yeah. tuna fish. Yeah, that's a famous exactly. Charlie yeah. Adler story. Yeah. But um but the point is is that I realize that that spiraling that we do where like we begin to believe something and then that that thought manifests and you think another thought based on that you start we call it spiraling. Yeah. In our primary realities, we don't want to spiral because then we believe something to be, you know, true that probably isn't. Right. And that's called living, you know, delusionally. You're delusional. Yeah. Um, but in our play pretend world, we want those thoughts to be going on. Yeah. We want ourselves to be thinking those things to make that world real for us. And as I always point out to people, um, I always do this exercise right off the bat to explain how my teaching works. I'll, I'll do it with you. Um, did you play pretend like a make-believe game when you were a kid? Yes, I did, Richard. Okay, uh, what did you do? Did you play house? <laughs> well, I played army. Okay, you played army. Perfect yeah. example. Did you play with a brother or did you have a friend? Brother. Brother, brother. okay. Yeah. Who were you? Were a sergeant, colonel? What was your rank? Uh, I was usually, uh, uh, Troy from Rat Patrol. Okay, Troy from Rat Patrol. So, Troy, say something you would have said to your brother while you were playing pretend. Go ahead. It's like, come on, we gotta go in there and get the Germans. Good. We gotta go in there and get the Germans. Disclaimer, no offense to any Germans. No, no, I didn't say Krauts. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. Well, well, you okay. know, yeah, in the I, movies. I, 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 the movies, yeah, I got okay, you. Come on, get in there and get the Germans. I grew right. up in the 60s. Okay. So you would play, and you would play, and you yeah. would play. And at the end of that uh, make-believe time, because we call it make-believe, mm -hmm. um, your mom or your dad would say, okay, it's time to come in, wash up, right. and let's have dinner. At the end of that make-believe time, did you ever say to your brother, let me ask you something. When I said, come on, we got to go in there and get those Germans, did you believe me? Or should I have gone, come on, we gotta go in there and get those Germans. Come on, let's go in there, we gotta get those Germans. Right? You right. didn't do it. No, not at all. Yet you believed it, yes. and your brother followed yeah. you right behind. You went in there and you got the because Germans. Because we, we were... Because you you're know, playing pretend. Exactly. But then yeah. suddenly I tell you, okay, it's for uh, it's for a three-year series. Right. And it's for, you know, uh, double-scale plus Come on, yeah. we've got to get in there yeah, and get right. the Germans. So your want yeah. becomes getting the job. Yeah, it's not about to. playing pretend. Being real yes, within just the like, moment. Yeah, well, like I don't use sort of That's like... That's actually very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I don't say like real within the moments because as human beings, we don't say I'm being real within. It's my right, favorite right, thing. Right, yeah. I get this all the time. I'll get people walking through my door and they'll say, well, the, the breakdown says real, conversational, natural. Yeah. How do I do that? Yeah. And so let me ask you something. When you came in to ask me that, did you think, okay, when I say this, I want to sound real, conversational, <laughs> natural? No. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, is that my conversation, as you can see, is often animated. There are people with animation that are animated when they talk. So I would only be doing this. You would it'd feel really weird if I was just going, Bill, I think there's a problem with my prostate. Mm. I'm going to the bathroom quite a bit. I know exactly how you feel. And yet when I go to the bathroom, nothing comes out. Right. It's very uncomfortable. Because your prostate is as big as a musk melon. Ask your doctor if your yeah. musk melon is too big. It may cause urination of the bowels. <laughs> Anyway, of the bowels, of the bowels, <laughs> oh bowels, bowels okay. yes, or your bowels. Little, your but my bowels point too. is, is that that's not how I'm real at conversational natural. Exactly. I'd, be like, I'd be like, damn, Bill, every time I go to take a leak, I can't get it out. <laughs> it's like taking me ten yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's like I point out if 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 Jim Carrey or Robin Williams were starting out today, or Jason Alexander, they would say, no, it's, they're too over the top. Yeah, I love that, too over the top. Yeah. Fact of the matter is, is that. They never stopped being who they are. Right. They know what they do and what they bring to the table. Right. And so any any series would be glad to have Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, Jason Alexander. Well, right. maybe Robin Williams and Jim Carrey. Yeah. But <laughs> but they're they're animated when they talk. Yeah. Their energy. Exactly. That's their real natural conversation. Yeah. I like that though. That's very good. Um, <laughs> no, this is all good stuff. Okay, uh, we got to start wrapping this up. Uh, Tell us a, a little about your... Now, well, let me ask you a couple things. Um, you, you mentioned uh, that commercial demos are most important. How would one get into cartoons if they, had, if they wanted to get into cartoons? What would be the first step besides just taking your class? Well, you would take my class. Yeah. 
and then you would uh, take my follow-up class. Okay. And then, <laughs> then there's five then more. Then there's five more that. classes. Now. Yeah. And um, then, then here's you, what I tell you send people. me a ticket to yeah, New York so we can see Book, Book of Mormon. Mormon. Yeah. Now, when when you're talking about animation. You know, you have to make your agent... Because everybody wants to get yes. an animation. You have to make your to agent aware that you want to do animation. Right. And they will, they will, you know, either... Uh, let, 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 let me go back another step, because a lot of people who watch the show don't even have an agent. Okay. So what can they do to... Again, uh, we're going to say you want to take a class at some point. So what could they do after they take a class? Okay, after the you take the, after you take a class, <clears throat> and in that class you really like in my in my class you learn you realize that it, it never starts with the voice. Mm -hmm. People say to me all the time, I don't have a hundred different voices. I know they want at least twelve different voices when you do animation. But me being case in point, I've done tons of work, and you always know it's my voice. Yeah. Um, that's because my want and my story changes and, and all the things that so I So you say into. it's the acting that's most important. And, and I think that there's probably been people that have come before me like like um, like Maurice and Rob and Quentin and everyone that will tell you that it never starts with the voice. Right. And, that, you know, most people get their stories or copy their scripts and they, they're immediately going, what voice do I have that I can put to this? Right. It never starts with the voice. It always starts with the story, and then your voice changes, and people always go, well, I can do a kid voice, and they always do this! They always do and I'll tell them, you know, it never starts. Age is attitude, not pitch. Exactly. Age is attitude, not pitch, because we already know that you're not really a kid. A kid. Exactly. So if I'm... Uh, I always tell people in my when I played Billy on Billy and Mandy, I'm, I'm like a ten year old boy in that show, and I actually speak lower. It's Billy than I do in my normal speaking voice. Yeah. So it's like, say, what are you doing, Graham? Hey, can I do that? You know, like kids talk fast. That's yeah. what we think. So anyway, to answer your question, you take classes, and once you've got a firm grip about how you break down your stories and create your characters, then you want to go private with someone who produces an animation demo. Right. Um, and you want to work with them. Anyone that says they can put an animation demo for you without ever having met, met you and then just here, show up at the studio and here, we'll do this. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I agree. You've got to be very specific. It's one of the steps that I teach is specificity. You've got to know, I'm not going to play, you know, I'm not going to play the superhero. Mm -hmm. I know that about myself. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I'll play the villain. I always play the villain because that there's more room for character there. Yeah. But it's, I'm not Spider-Man. Yeah. I'm not Superman. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not the Joker even. So, well, I can be the Joker. Well, even, I, I mean, just uh, goofing off. I'm yeah. like, oh, so were you the kind of nerdy right. guy? You were the, right. you were so the you smart have to guy? Have someone, right. You have to have <laughs> someone that, that knows that, and they direct you so that you are very specific about what you offer mm -hmm. that agency and that show that they can sell you on. Yeah. So, to answer your question, you take your classes with a bunch of people, you then meet privately with a person that coaches, produces, and directs, and does your role demo. Okay. You, if you can find a workout group, I recommend workout groups all okay. the time. The more you do... Improvisation helps? Huge. Okay. I always say to people, if they've never taken an acting class or an improv class, start there before you just go and do an animation class. That's what I always tell people. Always do an acting and an improv class. Okay, well, look, uh, we're running out Margarita! of time. Margarita! We're running out of time. Um, I, I apologize for this. We will have Richard back because this was one of the most entertaining shows I've been on, okay? It was um, all right for me. When, okay. when, when are your classes? Three times a year? Three times a year. If you want information or want to get on my mailing list, it's uh, Richard Horvitz Classes, C-L-A-S-S-E-S, at gmail.com. That's it. Richard yeah. Horvitz Classes. What do you got there? Well, I got some gifts for you. Wow. Before we leave, you, you get to what, you get what, some gifts. This what, is the uh, gifts. This is a, a Christmas carol produced right here, but the Spanish version. Oh! Uh, starring Jojo Henriksen and Ruben Garcia. Qué barbaridad! <laughs> yeah. Qué lastima! <laughs> oh, finally somebody who knows how to pronounce it. Thank God. Qué lastima! And then uh, we have a T-shirt here for you. We have a T-shirt, a voiceover doctor T-shirt that doctor. we want to give Love you. Love it. Okay, so and it kind of goes with your little outfit. It, does. it goes here. with my okay. little outfit. And then uh, my last outfit. but not least. I didn't wear my big outfit. Last but not least, we got the swimsuit issue <laughs> of uh, Sports Illustrated just for you. I Margarita. Got that. <laughs> got oh, that just for oh you. My, yeah, there you go. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, so enjoy that. So. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for being on the show. Nope. Oh, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, really voiceover doctor. 
<laughs> and uh, if you want to see more of the show, you want to contact us, voiceoverdoctor.com. Uh, get on our mailing list. We do this shit all the time. And uh, that's all I got. Uh, you wanna, I got no more. You want to do Catherine Hepburn one more time? <laughs> uh, Catherine Hepburn? <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Thanks request. for tuning in. We'll see you at the next time, and I have no idea what we're going to do. Okay, bye-bye. You know him, you love him, you want some more of him. The voiceover doctor, a real smooth talker. The voiceover doctor show.